Uh, so hi everyone, today we will try to understand a very famous auto ML framework called as ML jar and I will also try to explain you the results over a dummy data set. Uh, so let's get started. So let us first of all know a few features of ML jar framework. So it works only with tabular data so you won't be able to use it for image classification or text classification. It automatically understands your data so you just need to provide with the, with the data set and the labels and it will be able to determine whether the problem is for binary whether the problem is for classification or regression it has got four modes basically explain compete perform and optuna depending upon the requirement of the developer so we will be discussing all these uh, modes one by one in this particular vlog i'll try to understand when to use which mode and it also create multiple models and create detailed reports for all of them so you would be able to see which models were tried out which combinations are tried out and eventually what are the results for that uh, so let's get started first of all see this uh, this is a data set that I've been using so I'll be doing uh, so here I won't be doing anything uh, that is the whole concept of auto ML I won't be converting any categorical data and numerical features also everything would be done by the ML jar auto ML framework here the, uh, the task is to classify this income as less than 50k or greater than 50k so there are two classes it is a binary classification problem that I'm attempting also, do remember that any steps followed in a particular mode are completely dependent upon the data set. Uh, so eventually it can be the case that x number of steps are followed for a particular data set A and y number of steps are followed for some data set B. So this can vary a lot. Hence, uh, it, it is not the number of steps followed and the approach followed is not stationary for all the problems. So now let's get started. So first of all, what we will be doing, we will be importing all the important libraries including uh, the MLJR AutoML framework which is uh, important using supervise.automl import automl the next step is to uh, load the csv as a data frame make a test train split and separate the label column for yourself so that will be uh, feeding this expl explicitly to the automl, uh, automl framework so now the first mode that we will be trying out would be explain mode so it is basically used for getting quick insights over the data set and will be the uh, is, uh, is the quickest model that we will be able to get with no time. So basically uh, for this we need to mention the mode explain. We will now try to see what are the things that are done when we will try to train the training data set in mode explain. So basically for the first step it, it decides whether the problem is regression or classification as you can see in the logs. It creates a directory automl underscore one. So basically, this is because uh, it is creating folders for every experiment that you are running. So any other time you are running any other experiment using this uh, the object, so it will create a uh, directory with suffix two. Next little time it will create a directory with suffix three, four, five, six, seven, eight like that. So the number of experiments you are running, uh, the more directories will create with suffix underscore the number of experiment it is. Not also chooses over the binary class that log loss has been chosen as a classification metric for binary classification. It selects a pool of models to test out as you can see. Baseline, uh, decision trees, random forest, exibus, neural network. Now it also says key it will be able to, it will be assembling available models. So ensemble means like uh, taking out a combination of models and try and finally making some results. So the steps involved in this particular approach is simple algorithms, default algorithms and ensemble. We need to understand what is the baseline uh, algorithm that is mentioned in the list baseline decision tree. So baseline is nothing but uh, providing it either random classes to all the samples or one label to all the classes, all the labels, all the, all the samples in the data set. So baseline will be that model. So for example, if you have a classification problem with 55, uh, uh, with 100 samples, with 55 labels as one and 45 labels with zero. So in baseline, either we'd be uh, randomly assigning uh, zero or one to 100 samples, or we'd be assigning one to all the samples, which is a majority class, giving us accuracy of 55%. So basically, automatically we wish to see that which models are performing better, at least performing better than a baseline model. Simple models are basically the uh, simplest of algorithms, but or uh, the explain mode will try out. So this includes baseline decision trees. Next is categories, default algorithms, includes XGBoost, neural networks, and rain, uh, random forest. And ensemble is finally a weighted average of all the pre-trained models, uh, previously trained models in default and simple algorithms. Now, finally, if you look into the logs of uh, explain mode, here you can see that the best model is default XGBoost, and the time for uh, fitting is 196 seconds. That is nearly uh, 3.25 minutes. So basically, uh, within 3.25 minutes, uh, AutoML has come out with the best model as XGBoost uh, and it has tried out uh, 5 models and 
again an n and ensemble as well ensemble is basically weighted average of all the models now uh, on testing on the test data set the accuracy was around 86% so that's not bad that's pretty good given the thing that we haven't tested the data set yet so this is all about the explain model uh, when you will see into the directory that we have formed earlier automl underscore one so there will be multiple things that you can see a directory for all the models that have been tried out different correlation heat maps different metrics that's coming in uh, progress and other meta information that you can see about uh, the training process now skipping now moving on to the compete part so compete is basically for those who wish to have uh, like the highest levels of uh, performance uh, irrespective of the time taken so latency is not an issue but performance is so it can be used for critical cases or like for carol competition compete can be a great thing so basically uh, how compete is different from explain so you will see that number of models that are tried are more number of steps that are included are also more so that's the only case compete becomes uh, a more heavier and takes more time as compared to explain so the models tried would be Legendary, random forest, extra trees, LGBM, XGBoost, CatBoost, neural network, near, nearest neighbors. Now, this list of models can change depending upon the data set. After the different steps followed are, so if you remember in explain there are just three steps followed, simple algorithms, default algorithms, and ensemble here. This is the total list of algorithm uh, methods that would be following. So, here you can see the logs for the same. As you can see, we are running a second experiment. So, the directory created is automl underscore 2. It is giving all the information that what steps we are we would be testing out what are the algorithms that we would be testing out so let's get started so uh, let's understand the different uh, uh, steps that here has been mentioned here so adjusted validation in short is just choosing an apt validation strategy that is tested over one decision tree before giving it to the problem simple algorithms default algorithms i've already explained in explain mode not so random is basically picking out random hyper parameters for testing out with models Mix encoding is basically uh, nothing but encoding mod, uh, variables with having categories more than 25 as label encoders and rest of uh, and the label and the columns with categories less than 25 as one hot encoding. This is done because if you go with one hot encoding for uh, variables which have high number of categories, so the dimension of your data increases exponentially. That is the reason why mix encoding can be preferred. Golden features basically it's feature around feature engineering where you apply basic transformations like uh, adding two features, subtracting two features to generate new features. K means features is very interesting. So it tries to include uh, features after cl uh, clustering the whole data set. Now the features may include distance of a sample from the cluster centroids or sample clusters label. So for a uh, row, after K means clustering, we can check uh, key how what is the average distance of this particular sample from all the centroids that can be one feature. What is the label for this particular sample that can be another feature so these are k-means features insert random feature um, so we would be adding a random feature also in the data set and then feature selection would be done so uh, for example now there are multiple steps for feature engineering golden features k-means insert uh, right golden features and k-means now using the insert random feature we will be inserting a random feature and while feature selecting we will be looking for feature importance so any feature which has a feature importance less than this random feature because the random feature won't be making any sense. So if any feature is having an importance less than this, so all the all such features will be dropped out. So it can be helpful in feature selection and feature engineering. Hill climb steps one and hill climb steps two are basically for <coughs> hyperparameter tuning. Boosting on errors is basically nothing but the boosting uh, algo uh, idea boosting technique that we follow in GBM model. So in all these logs, you can see these steps are getting followed. And symbol is nothing that I've already told that mul uh, aggregating multiple models that have been pre-trained and then checking the result. Uh, stacking is another type of uh, modeling where we introduce the concept of meta models. So basically we have a level zero and level one models and level zero models. Models are fitted on the training data set independently. So assume that we have five models, uh, XGBoost, decision tree, random forest, etc. We train all these models on, on a data training data set now level one meta um, uh, level one model that is called as a meta model is basically trying to combine the results of all these models uh, using another model so what that the, it does key meta model and takes the output predictions of the base models and then makes a final prediction so if you look at the flow feature data goes into base models the output of the base model is then fed into the meta model and then meta model gives out the output for the meta model that is the final class. 
there are many other steps that are uh, that are present in uh, the complete model that we won't be discussing uh, because of the restriction of the time but you can go and check it out you can try it on yourself and then uh, google out the different methods that are getting followed so basically the total time taken is one hour so if you see uh, in case of explain it was three minutes a little over three minutes and now in case of compete it is nearly one hour uh, with accuracy or on validation set equals to 88 percent so we have achieved an improvement of two percent but the latency is increased by nearly how many folds it increased by nearly 20 folds now moving on to the perform so based, according to documentation for urgent deployment and decent results uh, results better than explain but not as good as compete perform can be used so again uh, the model tested is a common is random forest lgbm xgboost cat boost the steps followed are very similar to that followed in uh, compete but they are not all the steps it is a uh, lesser number of steps that would be following and all of these explanations have all i have already covered in the uh, compete section so here you can see the logs that are getting for uh, that are getting generated and depending upon that the auto ml has come out with a best model is ensemble with a validation accuracy of 87.7 percentage that's pretty good the time taken uh, to uh, train perform mode is uh, nearly the same that is nearly one hour as comp as sim similar to compete mode that is nearly one hour uh, and the final metric uh, <coughs> is almost uh, the same as compete mode that is accuracy uh, that is 87.8 so in case of compete mode it was 88 percent not is 87.7 percent so uh, for this particular problem perform and compete are nearly the same optuna uh, the Optuna mode, the final mode, which is used for hyperparameter tuning. If you have used this lab, that's great. If not, so basically it will be internally using uh, Optuna to opt uh, to tune your hyperparameters. Again, the algorithm tested are similar. Steps followed are also pretty similar that we have already done. Now we also need to provide an Optuna time budget here. So for how long we wish to uh, tune our hyperparameters, that's an issue because this can go uh, for infinite number of times. So Optuna is used for basically hyperparameter tuning. Uh, it is a independent framework as well, uh, which is finding its integration ML jar. So if you really uh, specific about the performance of the model to tune your hyperparameters, you can tune uh, Optuna mode as well. So here I have taken a very less amount of Optuna time budget. 120 won't make any sense, but uh, for now, just for demonstration purpose, we can see that Optuna mode took nearly 1.5 hours with an Optuna budget of 120. The accuracy is 86.6 percentage, which is lesser as compared to compete and perform. So basically, if you wish to, uh, if you increase optimal time budget, I think the results will improve. So finally, comparing all the modes, so you can see the explain mode uh, has uh, extremely low uh, latency, just three, little over three minutes. The performance is almost same for all the modes, uh, but uh, the best for compete mode, and the log loss is also almost the same.